So, life not getting any easier for German Chancellor Angela Merkel. Portugal has plunged the Eurozone deeper into crisis and her ruling bloc has fallen further behind in the polls. This is just before state elections. There is one poll the Chancellor will be pleased about. Uh, it's, the, it's Germany's latest business confidence numbers. It broke this hour, actually at the top of the hour 20 minutes ago, and they've actually beaten expectations. The IFO's index has come in at 111.1, comparing with an estimate of 110.5. So just above expectations, but nevertheless below February's record high. Well, I'm pleased to say Hans Werner Sinn has been president of the IFO Institute for Economic Research for 12 years, and he joins us now. Thanks very much indeed for speaking to us. Um, so, not as bad as we thought it was going to be, but nevertheless below the, uh, the levels of confidence that we saw in February, Mr. Sin. Yeah, this is solely because of the diminished expectations. Half of the answers came in after Fukushima, and uh, there you see the implication. The assessment of the current situation, though, has uh, improved strongly over the previous month. So, in general, uh, the business situation in Germany is fantastic. Nevertheless, given what we've seen in Japan, this, the world's third largest economy, on top of everything else now, you know, renewed debt concerns in Europe, is this going to, in general, how is this going to affect confidence? Is it going to make companies in Germany that much more cautious? Well, it's very difficult to really make a full assessment of the Japanese situation because we don't know uh, whether there would be a meltdown uh, of the reactor on, uh, reactors or not. Uh, thus far, uh, the whole thing seems very limited and uh, doesn't look to have uh, major implications for the world economy, uh, let alone for the German one. Germany, after all, is a competitor of Japan, and how can a competitor suffer uh, from such a problem? Uh, no, I don't think it sweeps over to Europe. What are the prospects for growth in Germany when we look at all the headwinds, the issues in Europe and indeed beyond? Will we see growth, decent growth rates, maybe not as dynamic as before? Uh, well, I'm a little bit handicapped because we are in the period of uh, making a new forecast and I cannot uh, indicate anything about the, the new expectations and forecasts which we are having. But the old forecast was uh, that uh, Germany continues to grow like hell. Uh, it's amazing. Uh, because of the crisis, the German economy is booming, not despite of it. And the reason is that the world has become uncertain. So Germany was the largest uh, capital exporter on this side of the Atlantic and the other side. Uh, and uh, the capital is no longer daring uh, to go abroad, but stays at home, is being offered to domestic firms, to the construction sector. Interest rates are very low. And that is currently driving the German boom. We have an investment-driven boom, not so much an export-driven boom. Exports are strong, but investment at home is the driving force. Okay, so tell me a little bit, you, you're speaking about uncertainty. Uh, we've got elections coming up, state elections. German Chancellor Angela Merkel, her ruling bloc has fallen a little bit further behind in the polls. What could the economic implications be? Well, uh, uh, Mrs. Merkel uh, was uh, having a very cautious course. Um, Germany has shut down uh, seven nuclear reactors. Germany does not participate in the war uh, against Libya. Uh, so uh, you could say uh, it's a very uh, high degree of anxiety here in this country. And she takes this up and uh, tries to uh, calm the fears of uh, the people and they appreciate it. She is standing for um, solidity well, and for cautious so approach and this is exactly what people want. Uh, Dr. Hans-Werner Sinn, President of the Eiffel Institute in Germany, thanks so much.